Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Normally I don't talk in my videos and I only give you inspiration by showing my painting process. But today I want to give you a little one-on-one -on -one to be known before you actually start pouring. It's a very new art form and there's a lot of new beginners who read posts and blogs and Facebook groups and there is a lot of confusion about what is actually what, what do you need, how do you do it, but also simply why we do it. Uh, so I think that's really some information that's mainly missing. So I want to talk about paint, how paint is set up, pouring medium, consistency, see that kind of things. I, I want to keep it short. So if you want to learn more, there's also a beginner's playlist with some more information on the topics I talk about. So if you go to the shop, you also have, you need acrylic paint, obviously. But then you stand there and you have heavy body, soft body, fluids. And yeah, what is it? Look, fluid, fluid, very droppy, very nice for our art form already. Then you have some craft paints who are a bit more like this type of consistency. And then you have some that you squeeze out of the bottle because they're more like this type of consistency. So one of the main questions that come from beginners is how much water and how much pouring medium do I have to have, have to add? Look at it. Nobody can tell you how, if they tell you one spoon pouring medium, one spoon water to this, that's what will get really, really runny. This might be okay, and this might be still way too thick. So there are some rules and some things that, of course, you can do experiments with, but nobody can tell you how much. You can tell you, though, some general rules. In general, uh, you should not more add more than 30% pouring medium, or you should not add a lot of water. Again, matter of opinion, there are people who do it only with water, but I'm now going to show you why this is fine for yourself, for playing around, for this type of things. But if you want to go a bit more quality or even sell, I show you why it doesn't. It's not a good idea. So normally paint has pigments, right? And then it has a binder connecting these nicely, sharp, tight, that they don't fall apart. Now adding water, we're obviously making the binder thinner. So let's say this is 10% water. We're still good. Now imagine we do 50% of water. This gets very long and you will break the connection. It doesn't mean that the painting will look much different and that's why there's a misperception because the pigments obviously are still there. But over the long term, it's not a stable connection. And that's also why we use pouring medium. So what does pouring medium do? You have the pigments. And yes, we add water, so we stretch them. But we also add an additional layer of binder. So we will have more liquidity. It will be more fluid, but it will also stay stable. But of course, you cannot totally extend this to any how far you like but depending on your paint or your pigmentation you can get it in the correct consistency okay so this water plus pouring medium 30 percent is still a stable connection now the talk about pouring medium is also confusing because that word pouring medium was originally like for um, ready-made things like Liquitex or Golden, where it says pouring medium. This is not the same when you buy gloss medium or something like that. Pouring medium has everything it needs to make paint fluid, but it's also very expensive. So people were looking around like, what else can we use? And came up with PVA because it is like a binder that is also used in paint. And Floatrol, 
because it's used in the stuff when you paint a wall and you want it to be have a longer opening time people use Floatrol to do that on the big scale um, PVA yeah sounds complicated is actually glue if you read something about glue it's PVA but um, PVA is not archival so if you want to go again for it's perfectly fine it works perfect uh, whatever but if you're really concerned about uh, quality PVA is not archival if you look into PVAC, that's archival because that's the stuff that is made for, that is used for make paint. Okay? On uh, this, on the pouring medium, I also have another video. Now, consistency. I already showed this. Uh, you can, you need to get the right consistency to do the pour. Uh, so. This is actually the most important part because it will not work if you have the wrong consistency. If it is too thick and the standard is like a flip cup or a dirty pour where you put silicon or dimethicon, if it's too thick, let's imagine this is the paint and here's your canvas, your silicon is trapped under here. So yeah, you will have a little bit on top, but the rest will sit there. And you move it and you move it and just gets well fuzzy. Uh, but you won't have cells. Now, if it's too thin, you pour it on your canvas and it directly goes all boop. You know? Sorry, I don't have a better word for that. It spreads out. And the silicone is immediately like a layer on top. But it didn't do anything to your paint. Because the intention of silicone is to push through the layers of paint and by doing that, look, now you have the nice paint. Here is the silicon, and it will create a cell by raising to the top. You use heat to pull out the rest from the layers below. So you can do that. You will get more cells. Or you don't do that, and you have only the cells that come to the top automatically. Okay, uh, so that's the consistency um okay now imagine your pour is done your silicone cells are on the top you think oh that feels dry normally after 80 48 hours feels dry let's varnish or let's clean it why do you need to clean it imagine like a cooking pan right so you have a cooking pan you baked something yeah and there is nice oily stuff swimming here so you don't just take a cold wipe and carefully wipe that off. The oil will not come off, right? So you need to find another option to really remove the oil. Otherwise, the varnish you use will not stick. Also, resin will not. It needs to be fully clean. I have a video about the three options how to clean it. But you can imagine if you think about your cooking pan. You really need to pay really good attention to that. It can't be cold water. If you do it with dish soap, it needs to be warm. You really need to wash it. And if you don't wait enough, like three weeks, you will wash the paint off because it's not dry. It's not dry from below. And that also happens when you varnish. People varnish and it's not dry. Yeah, and they get all this little cracky stuff. And why is that? Because it's not dry underneath. So the the density, or how do you call that, the not dry, it still tries to evaporate out and it pushes against the varnish and cracks it. So that's why you need to A, clean it, let it sit again, because yeah, also from cleaning it's a bit wet, wet, and then after three weeks you can varnish it, yeah? Um, and that should be good. I have a video about varnishing because there's of course many, many products, many options. I prefer to thin it down a bit for the first layer. It needs to be thin. Uh, you can repeat it multiple times. I have no experience on resin, so don't ask. I have no idea. And I think these are the main steps that you need for acrylic pouring. So now have fun. Experiment a lot. It's very, very addictive. So look at your money if you have it or not. And yeah, I can only say it's very important to educate yourself uh, before you do anything. Because I have people in forums that bought this and this and this and this and they didn't know that it's or this or this or this so they ended up spending a lot of money with stuff they didn't need.
So give it a thumbs up, comment something nice. I know there's different matter. It's a matter of opinion and there's also many different ways, but this is my advice and have fun. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.